Now, notoriously, Boston is a city of bitterness, a city of spite and what could have been. Many people, at least in the entertainment industry, in my experience, have complained that it should have been them. It should have been their big break. And one of the most egregious examples of this is the show Park Street Under. What is Park Street Under, you might ask? Well, here, if you ask some people, it's what Cheers ripped off and screwed over a whole bunch of people. I'm here to tell you. It's not. Park Street Under was produced by WCVB-TV5, our local ABC affiliate here in the Boston area, a Hearst Corporation company, and they were one of the most productive local stations in the country, especially in the area. They did a lot of kids programming, like Jabberwocky. It's just a Jabberwocky world. Come on and see it with me. And Captain Bob. Good to see you all again. As you know, our program deals with this wondrous world around us and we study animal life usually. They did a lot of talk shows and magazine shows like Chronicle, which is still on today. But unusually, and in maybe one of the only cases I can think of where this happened, at least uh, in the 70s and 80s, they produced a local sitcom called Park Street Under. And Park Street Under in 1980 was a show about a restaurant underneath Park Street Tea Station that had a bartender. And all right, load up the beers, come on. Played by Steve Sweeney, Boston comedian. And we have four lucky sevens, three lucky golds, four mass millions. What was the number? And for years, people have said Park Street Under is what they ripped off for Cheers. And I'm here to tell you it's not because I've seen Park Street Under. Boston, Boston. After years of looking for it, I found an episode, and it is nothing like Cheers. The tea's running late, heating all short. Taxes keep climbing, kings holding court. Tuition increases, students don't cheer. Sports fans always crying, wait till next year. It's true that living costs a lot, but no city's got what Boston's got. If city life gets too confusing, find a place that's amusing. Where's that? First and foremost, it's very low budget and very local. Yes, it's a bar. You walk downstairs to get to it, although they call it a restaurant the whole time in this episode. The writing is... Mm. Hi, Augie. How'd it go, Augie? What can you say about a night out with your mother? <laughs> How about the ice volleys? Yeah, quite an extravaganza. You know, i never seen so many skaters with a full set of teeth. The acting is as good as they can with the writing. There's a real emphasis on physical humor here, which is never a good thing. Uh, there is a live audience, and you can tell, because otherwise a lot of these jokes would have gotten laughs pumped into them, and a lot of them fall flat. This here in the paper about Governor Dukakis. King is the governor. Oh, well, not according to this study. Special shout out to Ted Reinstein, who is still a correspondent on ABC uh, 5's Chronicle and looks exactly the same, somehow not aging at all. Vito Antonelli. Big problem here, Steve Sweeney, who is notoriously from Boston. By 10, I was on my fifth Dunkin' Donut, the corner of Mars, the Boulevard. Ridiculously, cartoonishly from Boston, some would say. Straight ahead. <laughs> somehow doesn't do a good Boston accent. Impossible. He started at 11.30 and oh. it is now 12.30. Oh. He's playing an Italian-American for some reason. Boston comedian Steve Sweeney playing an Italian-American. And Ted Reinstein is playing uh, his cousin who's also Italian-American. And we get into weird sort of Barbarino territory here. I don't know if it was the influence of The Big Ragu or Welcome Back Cotter or any other New York-centric shows, but these are not Boston accents, people. And these are not Boston terms. If I don't get to it pretty soon, I'm gonna go Bonoogies. Never heard that in my life. Bonoogies? That's Boston English. Hey, that's where I went to school. Uh, I asked some old people I know. They never heard that in their life. I don't know what that was. He had to work twice as fast so he wouldn't go bonoogies. <laughs> they talk that way in Houston too, huh? <laughs> Not exactly that way. More like go bonoogies. Uh, there's an old guy doing what I thought was the best Boston accent until halfway through the show I realized he was actually trying to do an Irish accent and uh, his Pepperidge Farm accent was not as impressive to me. Uh, 
this bar seems closed all the time, even when it's open, because there's only four people in the show. Uh, it's just not great. And it absolutely would not have been an influence on Cheers. I guarantee you nobody in Hollywood saw this show and said, let's rip this show off. There's something here. We'll make Cheers. There's no way. Uh, and Ken, you're probably saying, Ken, it's not fair. You saw one episode. You know, what if all the other episodes, of which I think there's 20-something, uh, are exactly like Cheers. And I will take you out to dinner in a revolving restaurant of your choice if you're able to find other episodes. And even one of them is exactly like Cheers because there's no way that's true. Anyway, Park Street Under, a Boston legend, legendarily ripped off for Cheers, finally saw it, and in my opinion, bunk. Complete and total bunk. And that is a real word. Met some Mefsa. Didn't have much of a plot. 